fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me. Fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. Fashion Insider Besties, hi. I am so glad you joined me this week. How y'all been doing? How is your wardrobe? How's your closet? Y'all got anything coming up that you need to find something to wear? Whenever someone I know is like, God, I got to find something to wear this weekend. I have no clue what to do. I'm always like, oh, too bad you don't know anyone who's a personal stylist. This usually shuts them up right away. If you have an event coming up, use this as an opportunity to get out of your fashion comfort zone and do something different. Ask for help in the store. You can do it. It's not that hard. I just made a video on TikTok and all I said was, stop saying you can't because yes, you can. Stop saying you can't. Because let me check, yes, the fuck you can. I had someone reach out to me to thank me and say, you know, I really needed to hear this today. So if y'all need some extra bossing around, feel free to call me. Seriously, it's one of my favorite things to do. But back to the subject. I'm all about getting something new, but it doesn't have to be everything. Maybe you just get some fabulous shoes or some new statement earrings. I've been very into earrings lately. What about a new jacket? It can just be one thing. I'm just saying. You don't have to go balls out. I mean, unless you want to, which I wouldn't be mad at you for that. And I would fully support that because I'm extra. So there's that. So speaking of events coming up and where you need to look fabulous, I just got back from my high school reunion. Now, I don't want to tell you what year it is because it's embarrassing. Okay. It was my 30-year high school reunion class of 1992. You heard it here, folks. God damn, I'm old. I really hope you listened to episode 112, What to Wear to Your High School Reunion, and the feedback I got, OMG. I mean, seriously, it made me so incredibly happy. I can't even. My bestie, Jenny, she posted the episode on our class Facebook page, and I had so many people, I mean, I say so many people, like a few people come up to me and was like, oh my God, I listened to your podcast. I figured out what to wear. I was so impressed and very flattered. I mean. That's what I'm talking about. I wore a Zimmerman dress and had some gold boots and my Chloe fringe bag. I was loving my outfit and I felt like everyone looked great. I mean, most people dressed up for the most part. So if you have a reunion coming up, it can be high school, it can be college, whatever. Listen to that episode for some style and spo. Okay. So after I was busy having a fabulous time at my high school reunion, I also went to the FGI Fashion Group International Night of Stars. This is a very prestigious award show where a lot of bougie people come to schmooze. It was really fabulous. And Julie Lamb of Julie Lamb New York Fine Jewelry was my arm candy for the evening. We had such a lovely time. Deepak Chopra was there. Iman at Christian Siriano. uh, My new bestie, Chuck Steelman. And the reigning Miss America was sitting at our table. Um, Love her. Her name is Emma, and she's actually from Alaska. I can honestly say that she is the very first person in my life that I have ever met that legit said that's where she's from. I was like, um, what? Of course, Nolan, our lady about town, he was there because he was working because he's very important. So this was a definitely a black tie event, and I was going to wear the sequin Ellie Saab gown that I have, and Nolan was like, no, 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 you need to wear the trash bag dress. So I have a dress that we call the trash bag dress. It's a red Calvin 205 dress made by Raph Simmons when he was at Calvin Klein. I've worn it a couple times like to Fashion Week a few years ago, and I haven't worn it in a really long time. So I I was really worried it wasn't going to be like enough. I cannot tell you how many compliments I got. It was insane. I felt so fabulous and different. No one had on anything like it. So when I say trash bag, it's like the same fabric, like that vinyl fabric that parachute pants are made from in the 80s. And it was raining 
so badly that night. Julie was like, oh my God, you're totally water resistant. I was like, um, I totally meant for that to happen. So after I was having a fabulous time with Miss America and being best friends with her, Jonathan and I actually went to London, as in England, just FYI, for the Alexander McQueen experience. We went a few days early and thank God we did because the time change totally kicked us in the ass. I mean, seriously, we stayed in Soho at the Covent Garden Hotel. It was so quaint, so gorgeous. It's a lot like New York and D.C. kind of squished together. We did the London Eye, which is like this really fun giant Ferris wheel that you can see the entire view of London when you're on the top. And so that was really fun. We ate fish and chips. We drank. We went out to dinner. We shopped. Then the cocktail party was actually at their store, which is on New Bond Street, which is the cleanest, most gorgeous shopping district I've ever seen. And then the dinner was at Claire Ridge's Hotel. It's stunning, gorgeous, insane. Wow. The service was to die. It was a very intimate dinner with 30 people. And then the next day, they took us to this museum at the Apsley House, which is where the Duke of Wellington lives. So that was very fancy and that was exciting. Then we went to the fashion show, which was at the Old Navy College, which is on Oxford College's campus. It was beyond stunning. The weather was gorgeous. It was in this giant clear dome. It looked like one of those giant balls that you get into, you know, like on a soccer field and you run around. Sidebar, you have to get your outfit approved to make sure that no one else is wearing the same thing for the show. And I wanted to wear my yellow dress that I had and somebody else was already wearing that. So I wore it to the dinner the night before. And then I got out of the car for the fashion show and some bitch had on my dress. And so many people were upset. The people at McQueen, my salespeople, they were pissed. And I was like, y'all, it's not that serious. I got over it. I mean, I got out of the car and she was like right there. I was like, oh my God. It wasn't that deep, but I was looking at her and I was trying to make a joke about it because she was from Japan and I really don't think she could speak English. And I was like, oh my God, we should totally get our picture together. She did not think that was funny. I totally thought that was funny. The show was actually unreal. It was very futuristic and Naomi Campbell walked in the show. So that was very exciting. Everyone was buzzing about that. Lots of bandage type dresses and, and very deconstructed tuxedos and leather jackets that were deconstructed and worn as dresses. So it was an amazing once-in-a-lifetime experience. And I'm so grateful to the people at Alexander McQueen for including me and asking me to come. And after the show, I got to speak to the designer. Her name's Sarah Burton. We're totally best friends, duh. And I had actually met her before at the last show. She is so sweet and really, really down to earth. Love her. I have pictures of us, you know, together that I'm going to post, but check out my Instagram for all of my pictures from London and the show so it can be just like you were right there with me. And I also got to see my friend Henrietta. Shout out to Henrietta if you're listening, who lives outside of London. She totally came to see me and I was really excited. We were in the same entrepreneur group and then we met and we had a great time together. So that was really exciting. Now that I'm back in boot country, that would be Georgia. Let's talk about boots. Let's talk about the subject at hand. We're going to have a quick boot lesson as this is a very important topic that people tend to get confused about or have questions. It's usually what to wear with different type of boots, what to wear with short boots. Can I do this? Can I do that? Does this look weird? Et cetera. So boots are determined by the type of heel. The height range can be as follows. It can be over the knee, right below the knee, mid-calf, above the ankle, or below the ankle, commonly known as booties. So these are different types of heights can range in heel size from stiletto to block heel to rubber sole, like for rain or for snow. Let's discuss each type of boot and what to wear with it so you have an idea of how to style them. Over-the-knee boots can have a high or low heel. They can come in leather or suede, which I think the suede is softer and has more give and is a lot more comfortable. These types of boots really only look great with people that are taller and have pretty slender legs. And the reason why I say this is because that I have some that I wore with a very short dress to Fashion Week last week, uh, last week, last year. And I was not a fan of how my thighs looked in these boots when I saw the pictures. So if you're like 5'3 or under, 
it's probably going to take up your entire leg. So I would opt for a lower boot. That's just a sidebar. The best way to style these, I think, is with a dress or skirt that comes to the knee so you can see the top of the knee boot. Wearing something long over and over the knee boot, it just really kind of defeats the purpose of that look. And it can cause a lot of unnecessary bulkiness underneath and it can make it look strange. Just saying. You can wear them over jeans, yes, but make sure if you do that, that it's super cold outside because you will be schwitzing, I swear to you. Like, don't even do that if it's above 40 degrees and you're going to be inside. My over-the-knee boots, let's just say, they're far from breathable. (laughs) I try to wear them when it's really cold. You don't want to get a boot like this if you're a hot-natured person. If you're schwitzing all the time, if you're constantly hot, uh, over-the-knee boot is not a good idea for you. Another thing to think about when you're purchasing a boot like this is, do you have a style to support this? And what I mean is, if this is a new style for you, great. But if you're super conservative, or if this is like a really risky purchase for you, make sure you have a cohesive look, something that you can actually wear with them instead of just blindly purchasing something like this and hoping you can work it out. That is called a style plan. So if you want an over-the-knee boot, you need to say, okay, I want to wear this type of dress with it. And you need to buy those things together so you have something to wear with the boots. If you want to get these boots, figure out how to wear them first and then what you need to do to pull off that look. It just requires a little bit of planning. It's not that deep. So just know that they make a very bold statement. I don't care if they're solid black and less is more. Okay. Boots that are worn just below the knee, this has been a style worn by both men and women around 10,000 BCE. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the first manufactured boots were made by Thomas Pendleton for the British Army. So the style has been going strong ever since. It's evolved over the centuries and become a staple in wardrobes literally around the world, several different countries, and saw a huge surge in the U.S. when they crossed over to high fashion which was in the 60s and 70s with the rise of the go-go boot worn by dancers and performers. Society proved that the boots weren't just for working in the factory or the farm anymore. So came the rise of the high fashion boot. Synthetic materials and overseas factories made these boots, types of boots, affordable to the general public. And so then they started coming in all different price points. Whether you have a high heel or a low heel, you know, these types of boots look great on people of any height and great with dresses, skirts, jeans, even shorts and tights in the winter, which I've pulled that off a couple of times. I do have a few pair that I really love and I wear them season after season. Yes, they can go in and out of style depending on how trendy you get, but as a whole, they really don't go out of style. The next level of boot height, which is technically mid-calf, I like to classify as a cowboy boot. Here's a fun fact. Traditional cowboy boots don't have any hardware or way to put on your feet except by sliding your foot in. They come in a ton of different price points and styles, but just know a real cowboy boot is worn for working on the farm or the ranch, protecting your feet and your legs while having a special heel for keeping your feet in the stirrups on a horse. That is the original, original function of a traditional cowboy boot. Now, you can get a real authentic cowboy boot from companies like Tacova. They just opened a brand new store in Atlanta. I haven't been there yet. Dan Post, Dingo, which I love Dingoes. I used to wear those all the time. Ariat and, you know, Lucchese, which or any boot barn or Western warehouse store is going to have like a gajillion types of boots from all these different designers. If you don't have anything like this where you live, you can go online, Avi, or you can head on down here to Georgia. And we can go down the highway and you'll see more boots at the boot barn than you've ever seen in your entire life. So there's that. Cowboy boots are forever. They will never die. Shorts, pants, skirts, maxi dresses, jeans. They always go with cowboy boots. They are not, however, they are not considered dressy. It's a great way to bring something dressy down a notch to make it more casual. That's a very important fashion fact. All of the examples will be on my Pinterest board that I made for you this week. Duh. I always make you a Pinterest board. I always take care of you. I always give you an example of what I'm talking about. So head over there if you still need a little bit more clarification. 
if you want a cowboy style boot that's not a real cowboy boot, but has the look of a cowboy boot, millions of options. I mean, gajillion, a million options. You can get a cowboy boot style from brands that I love, like Fry, Freebird by Steve Madden, Paris, Texas, fabulous, Isabel Morant, Jimmy Choo, and even Hermes. I have some Hermes cowboy style boots and I love them. I would like another pair, please. Oh, and they are shorter. These mine aren't mid-calf, but they are still fabulous. So many choices. If you want to go on Amazon and see what kind of cowboy boots you can get, you can certainly do that. You can go to a more authentic company like Ariat or Dingo, but it's really up to your budget and they're very easy to get. Now understand, if you buy cowboy boots, you might want to go a size up because you're probably going to wear like a thicker sock with them. So try to go like a half size or a full size up. That's just a fun fashion fit fact if you're trying to buy boots online. I recommend going to the store to try them on because that's how you're really going to see what size you are. To go to a boot that is like an ankle height or below, that's called a booty. In the honor of my friend Paula, she calls it a shabooty, but it's called a booty. Styling something with these can be a little tricky. However, you can do it. Just make sure the opening at the top of the boot is a little bit fitted. So it isn't so wide that it's rubbing or gapping at the top, or it's not like too tight. It's like, you know, squeezing your ankles. If you're wearing something that you can see the top of the booty, it should fit nicely around your ankle so it just looks like an extension of your foot. Wearing booties is a great way to get the boot look under your jeans without a large shaft that's going to look super bulky. I have several pairs of booties and it's something that I constantly have in my wardrobe. It's just a non-negotiable. If you need some brands of booties, literally every department store carries them. I don't care. You live in East Jesus, Kentucky. You live in California. You live wherever you live. Go to your local department store. They will have booties. Now, they don't have to be cowboy style booties. They can just be round toe. They can be plain, whatever you want. But anything that cuts ankle or below, that is called a booty. Boots are definitely something that is worn for fashion and for function. So, for example, if you wear snow boots or rain boots, and I just had to have this conversation with one of my besties because she moved to Atlanta from Denver and she had all these snow boots and we had to like pare it down because it only snows once every five years here. But the fashion crime is wearing rubber soled or weatherproof boots when it's not inclement weather. For example, if your ass lives in Florida and you're wearing knee high Sorel boots with a shearling lining, that's a fashion crime. If you're wearing, and I can't believe I have to fucking say this, if you're wearing Ugg boots and it's not 20 degrees or below outside, that's a fashion crime. Don't do it. If you're wearing those rubber hunter boots up to your knees and it's not fucking raining, please stop. If I see your ass in the mall, okay, and you're wearing hunter boots and it's sunny outside, don't do that. That is a fashion crime. It is not cute, especially if your rain boots have flowers on them or polka dots or rubber ducks. And the reason why I say that is because I've seen this in people's closets. If you want to get some rain boots, fine. Just make sure they're plain and you wear them when it's raining. That's all I ask. It's not a lot to ask, okay? You also have permission to wear rain boots if there's a hurricane outside. Only then. It better be raining if I see your ass walking down the street in some fucking rain boots. It better be snowing if I see you walking down the street in some snow boots and it's not in the dead of winter. Okay, you're welcome. So let's talk about the care and maintenance. Care and maintenance of your boots is very easy if you're already taking great care of your shoes, which I know that you are. Most of these boot companies, they want you to use like a leather conditioner or like a non-silicone water and stain protector. For somebody who's new to the boot trend, I'm not going to put that on you, but you do need to take care of them. Get to know your local cobbler or your regular shoe person. Get them polished. Keep up the heels, especially if you have a stiletto heel and your ass steps in the cracks every five seconds in New York City. You want a good shoe repair person. I cannot stress this enough. 
You don't have to get them resold. Okay, you don't have to do anything like that, but you do have to keep them up. Make them look new. This should go actually for your entire shoe wardrobe, by the way. Don't let me catch you wearing some beat down, scuffed ass, broken heel boots. No, ma'am. Don't do it. If you have a stiletto boot and the leather's coming off and it's scratched and it's beat down and the tips of your heels are off or they're uneaten, no, no, stop. Go to the local shoe place. It's probably right down the street from you or very close and have them fix your boots. I just had to do this for my high school reunion. I pulled out my gold Jimmy Choo ankle boots, my booties, and one of the heel tips was missing. I had no clue it even was. Guess what I did? I took my ass to the shoe repair place in North Carolina and they did an amazing job. Congratulations to me. So friends, fashion insider besties, I hope you've enjoyed this boot lesson. And as always, everything I like and I want you to consider for your boot options are on my Pinterest board that I made especially for you. God, I'm so nice. We've got some great things coming up. Make sure you stay tuned in for our signed up for our newsletter. If you have it already, share it with a friend, share it with someone you love. Tell everyone you know they need to listen to the Fashion Crimes podcast because it's amazing and so are you, okay? I appreciate everyone's support and I'm so excited who we have coming up next week, y'all. We have a phenomenal guest. Stay tuned for that. She is a handbag designer. I'm just going to say, y'all are going to want one. And I'm so in love with her. Y'all, let me know if you have any questions. DM me, send me an email, hit me up. Y'all have been doing great. Ask me questions. A couple of people have been sending me pictures. Do you like this? Do you like that? Loving that journey for me and you. I cannot wait to see what your boot choices are or what you want to get. This has been amazing. I'm so happy. This was a special request, a boot episode from one of my fashion insider besties. If you have a subject that you want me to discuss or talk about, I just might give you a shout out on the next podcast because that's how nice I am. I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. This has been the Fashion Crimes Podcast and we are out.